Today I hope to answer whether or not you should be upgrading from a 2015 Apple iMac loaded with an i5 to the brand new 9th generation i5 27 inch iMac. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane. So a few days ago I thought I would upgrade to a 2019 i5 Apple iMac. I didn't really want to go spec out the system. I probably should have done that. I'll get to that at the end. So this particular video will only cover Final Cut and how I use it, and hopefully that will help you guys as well work out whether or not you want to upgrade. Now to be fair, not everyone will work in the same way that I work, and not everyone will use the same codecs and, and file formats and all that kind of stuff. So just to give you a quick insight into how I work, I shoot everything in 4K on the most part. Sometimes I use 1080p, but all the projects you'll see in this video are 4K timeline, so just keep that in mind. Just to give you a quick explanation of the kind of work I do, most of the videos I render out here in Australia go straight up to YouTube. Very rarely do I actually give someone a file. It does happen from time to time, but generally I'm never outputting files in H.264, but we're gonna test that today as well. The files are just so much bigger, and here in Australia, if you're an Australian, you'll know our upload speeds generally suck. I did a video on that as well. So I like to keep the video files down also for storage, and I can upload them a whole lot easier. So the first comparison was a 4 minute and 43 second timeline, it was a 4K timeline as well. I also had color correction applied to each of the clips, some transitions and also a fairly complex title sequence. This first test was with background rendering fully complete. The 2015 iMac finished this project in 3 minutes and 26 seconds and the 2019 iMac finished this in 3 minutes 20. So it was only 6 seconds faster. I was like, really? Is that right? So I ran the test again and they both completed within one second. The way I ran this test was just to simply start the timer as soon as I hit save on the project and then I would just wait until I saw the notification pop up and then I would stop the timer. I did this two or three times just to make sure and every single time the brand new iMac was only a few seconds faster. That was quite shocking. Up next I tried the exact same project but with background rendering off and I also cleared out all the generated media. The 2015 iMac finished this in 6 minutes 55 seconds and the 2019 finished this in 4 minutes and 53 seconds. So it was quite a bit faster in this particular test and that was good because I started to wonder whether or not it was going to be that much better especially after the first test. So if you don't use background rendering the new i5 9th generation iMac is clearly a lot quicker. As I mentioned earlier, I don't ever export to H.264. The files are just way too big to upload or to do anything with what I particularly work with. But I know a lot of people will do that. If you're a video editing professional that like to hand off files to other people, all that kind of stuff, H.264 is definitely the way to go. I actually got to test this now with a much more complicated project, a video that I shot for Australia's top bodybuilder. And this was 17 minutes and 25 seconds. I also had LUTs applied. This was a much more complicated project. I also had some effects applied within the clips as well as much more complex titles and transitions, all that kind of stuff. Being that I noticed such a huge difference with background rendering on and off, I thought I would test this complicated project with background rendering just off. So here we go. The 2015 iMac finished this in 36 minutes and 37 seconds. So about twice as long as the actual project. And the 2019 iMac finished this in 19 minutes and 16 seconds. So that's with background rendering currently off. Now, if it was enabled and you let it run, the rendering times wouldn't be too dissimilar as you saw in that first test. So depending on which way you like to work, if you like to leave background rendering off, the new i5 iMac is so much faster, especially if you're exporting to H.264, it's an absolute no-brainer. Go for the upgrade. Let's have a quick chat now about the overall experience within Final Cut and how it performed and the differences therein. So the first thing that I should tell you is I never run the full preview window in Final Cut on my 2015 iMac. I run it in better performance mode. It just seems to respond better and it works fine. I'm so used to doing that now. And I thought getting this new 2019 iMac would make the difference between using better performance mode and full res mode, even if you've got the window at 50%. And that's not the case. Absolutely not. While the 2019 iMac was a much better experience before I started adding any complex titles or transitions, 
it still couldn't play back at full res, especially on some of the transitions that I particularly use. Most of the effects I have come from Motion VFX or Pixel Film Studios, all those kind of guys. So I use a lot of those effects. And even the 2019 iMac, even with the 8 gig 580X graphics card, still had some problems playing back that in real time. So I then had to drop it back to better performance mode, which kind of left me like, oh, so I'm back to pretty much the same experience. It's just a little bit faster and it does play a few things better on the new one than on the old one. Another thing that I noticed, if I sped up a clip and just put it into even up to 20 times faster than usual, the 2019 iMac could play that back with no problems at all. Whereas the 2015, it doesn't, it sort of skips and drops frames and all that kind of stuff until you background render, render the clip. The great thing about the 2019 is anything like that, it will do a whole lot better, but you still have to have it in better performance mode once you start making the project more complicated. If your projects are really simple, the 2019 iMac can handle editing, no problems at all, obviously better than the 2015, but for the kind of work that I'm doing, I still have to drop it back into better performance mode, which was a real shame. I think if you're gonna buy one of these new machines and you do simple things, you're gonna have no problems at all. The 2019 iMac is definitely the way to go. But for projects like mine that end up becoming more complicated and I've got three cameras and 4K video, I'm still gonna to have to drop that back on either machine. And I, I felt a little bit like, oh, maybe I bought the wrong machine. I ended up staying up pretty much all night, just getting the machine back and I took it back the following day. I was really dissatisfied with the fact that while it was better for certain tasks, the tasks that I needed it for really wasn't any better. I still had to drop it back to better performance mode and the rendering times for my type of file output was only seconds different. And to me, that just didn't justify the amount of money I spent on it. So the takeaway from this is if you like to use background rendering, stick with what you've got. If you don't like to use it, the 2019 performs much better, obviously, than the older generation 2015 that's sitting right behind me. If you output files in H.264, it's night and day different, but I don't do that ever with the kind of work that I do. And also for this stuff on YouTube, it's just, it's complete and utter overkill. What I should have done in hindsight was just go for the i9 and spec it up and do that. I think the fusion drive is also one of the things that holds these computers back a little bit. If you're gonna go for an iMac and you want the best experience, go for the ones with the solid state drives. I'll leave a link to the best configuration in the description below. I hope this video has been helpful. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. But I'm back to my 2015 iMac. It does the job for what I need it for and just the performance difference for the type of files that I output didn't really make me go, wow, that was a great investment. I kind of felt like the opposite, but that won't be the case if you're doing H.264. It's night and day different, so just remember that. Thanks again for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Catch you soon. See ya.